Hello, good afternoon, good evening, my synth-waving friends. I hope you guys are all doing great. I certainly am. So today, we're going to have a great session. And we're going to look at some basic techniques of using filters in synthwave. <laughs> if you recall, I live-streamed this same session last week, but due to my internet connection, it was botched and was useless, so there was no replay. In any case, I'm just streaming it once more because we all need more practice when it comes to synthwave techniques and especially filters cool alrighty so let's get started filters are one of the most important tools in the synthwave producers tool belt and so make sure to take plenty of notes and ask all the questions uh, that you need and make sure to try out all of, all of these techniques on your own now Definitely filters are not only important in synthwave, but in electronic music in general. It's like one of the characteristic moves or effects or techniques that I bet, I dare you to listen to a house, trance, techno, or any kind of mainstream and contemporary electronic music style. And you won't you won't hear or you won't listen to a minute of music without some kind of filter movement going on again so it's not necessarily necessarily particular to synthwave but it's super important in electronic music and in synthwave specifically it will help you tremendously to create an arrangement or a track that feels alive like it's living and breathing like things come in and come out uh, like they weave in and out in a in a very gracious uh, way that doesn't draw attention to itself unless that's what you're going for cool and before we get into the daw and i start explaining the, the basic types of filters and how to put them in action just wanted to mention that uh, if you're a synth wave beginner and want to cut off years from your learning curve i'm putting together an eight week intensive pr uh, group training program called the synth wave kihon skill camp and you can check the information in the description of this video find follow that link and just sign up to receive more information cool alrighty so let's head into the DAW all right like I mentioned why use filters at all well it's it's a very handy tool and used in all styles of electronic music and you can use it to gradually introduce or fade out elements in your arrangement uh, you can also use it to bring stuff in uh, by drawing a lot of attention to itself so depending how you do it you can do it um, you can bring stuff in gradually without calling attention to itself or you can do it like uh, very forcefully with a lot of color okay also you can make your arrangement feel organic even though you may have few elements in your track let's say you only have four or five elements like a main lead and alternate lead bass drums and a pad um, there are synthwave producers for example time cop 1983 comes to mind that he is an expert and a master in using filtering because he keeps the arrangement moving uh, he keeps everything sounding like it's alive without introducing um elements new elements all the time like with very few elements you can milk it in a way that your arrangement feels very complex and that it's constantly moving and going somewhere and of course you can use filters as a kind of special effect and ear candy i'm not going to touch upon using filtering as an eq technique for example high passing a bass to cut off the bottom end or or high pass or low passing the top end of something just to, to get it to fix better in a in a mix it's more um it's going to be more like an special effect kind of thing ear candy and some of these eq and automation moves to introduce um introduce movement and um color into your music hey elysium Corcellos, thank you guys for being here Alrighty, enough of that so let's talk about filters today i'm gonna cover three basic types that almost all filter plugins and eq plugins have i'm just going to show you how this works in uh the the fab filter volcano 3 plugin but there are plenty paid and free filter plugins that have resonant filters where you can do the same things that i'm going to show you nothing particular to this plugin okay so and we're going to cover 
low pass filter, high pass filter, and band pass filter. There are other types of filters, more for EQing and for some other um, stuff, specialty stuff that is going to be outside of the scope of this live stream. So we're going to focus on low pass, high pass, and band pass. Cool. So first things first, let's address the low pass filter. The low pass filter lets low frequencies pass. Or said differently, it cuts high frequencies. So a low pass filter lets the lows pass and cuts or filters the highs. It can also go by the name of high cut filter. So low pass and high cut are exactly the same thing. If you have a, a like a vintage EQ or some certain plugins, instead of low pass, they say high cut and it is the same thing. Okay. What this filter is going to do is going to is take away high frequencies. And I'm going to play bits and pieces uh, and pieces of music here and there just uh, for us to understand how this works. We have this arrangement and a low pass is going to let lows pass and cut away the highs. So as I turn this filter frequency knob, we can hear how the lows are going away. The sound gets darker and darker until it's a kind of a rumble that depending on the headphones or monitoring system that you have, you may not be able to hear it down here at the bottom. Okay, but again, low pass goes from full bandwidth to cutting away the highs, making the sound darker and darker and darker until it completely goes away. That's the low pass filter. And there are three main parameters in a low pass filter. The first one is the filter frequency or filters, uh, filter frequency cutoff. And it's the point at which the, um, the filter will start cutting away frequencies. Now, technically, the, the, the cutoff is really the point where the filter slope is already cutting uh, frequencies away. But just for, for, for this demonstration, not to get too technical about it, let's just say that the, this filter frequency here, for example, one point or 1.5k, that's the point where we're going to start filtering or cutting out high frequencies. So that's the, the first parameter. The second parameter is, this is a resonant filter that includes a resonance or peak control. You see here, if I start turning this dial labeled peak in other filters, it will, it will say resonance. What I'm doing is I'm boosting the frequencies here close to the cutoff frequency. And what this is going to do is introduce more character and a very specific sound to our filtering action. Now you have to be careful because this filter or frequency peak, uh, think of it as boosting frequencies in your EQ. So you're boosting the amplitude or the level. And if you introduce too much, you may distort your sound. You may introduce um, uh, weird resonances that make the whatever source shrill or awful. So you have to be careful with how much you boost here the resonance. But let's take a listen. If I wanted to filter out this track and go from full band to dark without resonance or without much color, like kind of uh, transparently, then I would do it without any resonance. And this is how it would sound. Okay, it just gets darker. Now, if I boost the frequency or the resonance here, now hear how it sounds. It does this characteristic filtering sound. And if you heard there, I also introduced a lot of, uh, a, a bit of distortion because I went a little too far with that. Okay, so if you sweep with resonance like this, has a different character than just sweeping without resonance. Okay, so one is not better than the other. They're just different flavors. If you want to filter with without drawing attention to the thing more transparently, then don't use resonance. But on the other hand, you, you want to make this big sweep um, as an effect for color, then use resonance. But be careful of how much resonance you use. 
The other thing, the other parameter that we're going to look at is the filter slope. So this slope or how steep, there, there's a control called slope, or it may be labeled something else in your filter or in your EQ. And what it does is just sets how, how steep the curve is, meaning at this point, a more gradual curve or less steep slope will allow more high frequencies through. A very steep curve or slope like this is going to cut away more of the high frequencies. Again, it's not good or bad, depending on what you need. So for example, if, if for whatever reason, let's say I want to set my filter here on this section of the track. Here, the high frequencies that are still coming through. What happens if I make the curb or the slope less steep? More come in. Okay, so it's a choice. At this point, do I want more or less? That would guide me to go for a uh, more of a gradual slope like this or for a really uh, steep slope. And the other thing to consider is that typically like a one pole filter or 6 dB proctive of slope is um, you can't almost hear it depending on, on where you are. So if you really want a strong effect on your filter, typically you would go for 12, 18, 24 or higher dB per octave or poles. Okay. The final thing I want to mention about low pass filters, let me set this to 12. And no resonance is that even though I can move this frequency knob all the way from the bottom like four Hertz here at the very left like where all the low frequencies are to all the way on the right to the top uh, like 71 K that's not 7 K 71,000 Hertz the filter depending on what source material you're using that'll it will come to a point where you move the filter higher and you don't hear a change or you move it lower and you don't hear a change. So you got to keep that in mind when you're automating and you want a certain effect that there is a usable range here. For example, so we could say that here at, at this point, let's say 14K, if I move the filter higher or open it more, there's no change here. So all of this is wasted movement. Okay, I'm not doing anything. And if I start filtering out the high end, it comes to a point, let's say at 25 Hertz in this case, where I move it here and it's only rumble. There's no point in moving it all the way down here. So we could say that the, that the sweet spot for this audio material where I have this filter is from Maybe like around 60 hertz all the way to 14k. And again, keep that in mind when you're automating your filter that then you don't necessarily want to uh, start here at the bottom and end all the way at the top. Stay in the sweet spot so you have to automate less or, uh, or, or, or have a, an easier time drawing the automation. Okay, that's all I'm going to say for now about the low pass filter. Okay, now let's tackle the high pass filter, which is the opposite of the low pass. And we're going to go faster because we've already covered most of the, the controls. So a high pass filter lets the highs pass or keeps the highs while cutting out the lows. Okay, high pass keeps the highs, lets the highs pass, you shall pass, he says to the highs but cuts out the lows. Another name for a high pass filter is a low cut filter because it cuts out the lows. So cutting out the lows or letting the highs pass is two sides of the same coin. It's the same thing. In this filter, it's called high pass and low pass, less confusing. All right, and we have the same controls, the frequency cutoff, we have the same uh, resonance boost or peak, and we also have the slope. Now the difference is that when we take a high pass filter and it is completely open, we have a full bandwidth 
And as we close the high pass, the sound gets brighter and brighter and brighter, thinner and thinner, thin, bright, thin, because all the lows and the mids are going away until we get to this point where it's shrill and um, brittle at times. And you only hear that. Okay. So that's the that's the thing about the high pass filter. With the low pass filter, you go from full bandwidth to dark and all the lows. With the high pass filter, is the opposite. You go from full bandwidth to only the highs, very shrill, very brittle, like very teeny tiny. And again, none is better than the other. If you wanted to high pass a certain section to introduce an element or to take it away, is it better to use a high pass or low, or low pass? Just like colors, one is blue, the other is red. You have to figure out for yourself which one you like best. Okay, and like I mentioned, the same thing about the steepness of the curve, the, the frequency cutoff, and the resonant peak. Okay, also one thing is that, especially if you're using resonance, it doesn't matter if it's low pass, high pass, or band pass, which we'll look at next be careful when you stop moving a filter or the, or if you set it static statically like this okay at this point the filter this resonance boost is going to be boosting the frequencies here right at the cutoff so depending on your source material you could be introducing some awful and annoying uh, resonances and frequencies or maybe introducing a lot of boominess if you Let's say, stop here. It's a horrible frequency. Or if you stop here, you're blasting your mix with a lot of uh, low end because you're boosting it here. So you got to be very careful how much you use the resonance. And if you're going to um, use the filter statically, like let it be somewhere or automate it where it ends, be conscious of what uh, frequencies it's going to be um, it, it, you're going to set the cutoff at and for example if this we, we're going to automate this filter and I'm annoyed by this frequency it's creating a really uh, a really horrible sound then I will automate it just a little bit beneath or a little bit above so be conscious of that right be, be choiceful where you stop your filter moves so they don't end up in a in a place that's annoying or introducing distortion and weird resonance and awful sounds cool be conscious of that alrighty so that's that let's take a look at the band pass before we look at some of the um, the examples that I brought for this session so a band pass you can think of it as a mix between a high pass and a low pass because we're gonna cut off the highs and cut off the lows we're just gonna let a band pass right that's what a band pass does and the same we have the same frequency control we have the same filter resonance with all the same caveats and warnings that i just gave you and we also have the slope which does the same but in this case uh, the slope will introduce or filter more highs and lows at the same time the other two filters you were only dealing with the highs or the lows in this case we're dealing with both at the same time and it has a very characteristic effect if we just set it statically like this, kind of like an AFM, like an AM radio, the old days, if you remember that, or like talking through a walkie-talkie or listening to music on, on a very bad mobile phone or speakers, there are almost no lows and almost no highs. So you're filtering um, at the top and the bottom, and it's very different from a low pass and a high pass. Cool. And, like I mentioned, the same things apply. We can introduce resonance. And you can play with this and automate it so it's not static and introduce movement like this. Or program like a huge filter sweep like... Something like that. Okay, so band pass cuts the lows and the highs and how much depends on the slope and 
also where you set your center frequency and be careful with the resonance use it to your advantage most dedicated filter plugins will have these um these parameters or these controls a an advanced filter plugin like filter fat filter volcano 3 it has some lfos and a bunch of stuff that i can use to uh, automate modulate um, outside my daw uh, i may show you some of this but in in any case any filter that you um that you can find is going to be fine just learn those basic controls low pass low pass high pass and band pass now let's see them in action with some of the examples that i brought to this session okay here we're still listening to the same audio material but in this case we're going to assume this is an intro and a very basic or standard bread and butter move is you start the intro with an element being full bandwidth let's say the drums or a pad or whatever and you gradually introduce one element by using a low pass filter that's closed and you open it as your intro goes along and it sounds like this here we have the bass before we get to that um this is the 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 filter automation that i drew as you can see here it's moving from here to here it's going to open the filter and i'm going to show you in the plugin what it's doing and this is the bass now let's take a listen the filter is slowly gradually coming in the bass we start to hear it more and more cool at this point it was filtered we started adding in the frequencies adding in the frequencies and at this point it comes in full bandwidth let me play it again this is a very standard technique for an intro for any other section you have a couple of elements going on one of them is using a low pass filter completely closed and you gradually open it towards the end of the section or wherever you want to introduce it once more Okay, cool. One thing that I want to mention is that you see this curve is not a straight line. And this is the kind of thing that you need to experiment with. In this case, like I mentioned, I'm not starting at zero. I'm starting at 42 and I'm not, I'm not going all the way up to the, the top of the range. I'm automating the sweet spot. And there was a point here where if I went too slow, some of the base frequencies would start to dominate the mix and introduce uh, nasty stuff so so that's why i had to like accelerate the 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 going through these frequencies here uh, and then get to a certain point later but then also accelerate towards the end um this is a, again this is the thing that you need to play with maybe it's a linear curve uh, like a straight line which you need maybe you have to draw stuff in and use curves etc you have to figure it out and do what's what sounds best for your music okay so that was introducing one element via a low pass filter this next example it's going to be similar we're still in the intro of a track but this time i'm going to filter in the bass and the drums together last example just one of them was filtered in this time we're going to filter two now obviously to be able to do this you need to route your bass and the drums to the same uh, bus channel bus track or group track depending on how it's called in your, in your daw and this is the kind of thing that you need to experiment with and find out and figure out so when you want to use it you can do it very quickly in this example i'm going to filter in as you see here there's no automation on the bass lane but it's on the here the drum bus okay and in this case, I'm using a band pass filter. Check it out.
course this transition is a little crude and I could have prepared it uh, prepared it with some other stuff that's fine you saw here that I just painted or drew in some automation uh, to introduce a little bit more movement of course I could have done something like this where it's a static filter and it sounds okay and maybe I could have something else playing on top that's full bandwidth to contrast these two elements but I just wanted to introduce a little bit of movement and a big sweep here towards the end. Okay. Nice. One thing that I do want to mention, though, is that for, uh, for using a bandpass filter like this, not only do you have to automate the movement of the filter, the filter cutoff or the filter frequency, but you also have to um, automate the filter being active or inactive. And the reason for that is if I just set my... If, if I don't automate the activation and deactivation of the filter, as I progress to my next section, everything is going to be filtered, right? As opposed to a low-pass filter or a high-pass filter where you could set them at the top or the bottom, right, and, and be and let all frequencies through, a bandpass is always going to filter something. So uh, to avoid that, not only do you have to automate the, 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 the filter cutoff, but when you don't want it anymore, you have to find in your DAW, draw automation to activate or deactivate. Cool. So here, just check that. Check this button here. If it's lit, it's active. And if it's unlit, it's inactive. And before we start the part... Did I do this correctly? Or oh, here. Here's where, where I activate it. So check it out. Here's unlit. I've activated it. Now it's moving. And here... Notice that, that I deactivate again, and it goes to off. Okay, so that's important to do with a band pass filter. Don't forget it. You'll figure it out if you leave it on. Cool. Let's see what else we got. All right. Another example. Let's filter in an ARP. Let's see what I did here. Okay. So I have this ARP. And this is a low pass filter and I've automated it going from closed to open to introduce movement and variation in this part. Let's take a listen. Cool. And if you noticed, at a certain point where I was around here, the speed of the filter accelerates. And you see that it, it goes slow again. And it's just because I found that on this ARP, if I went too slow here, there would be annoying frequencies that would resonate a lot. So I had to tweak the speed here of the ramp or of the automation to address that. So it's not always like you just draw a line a, a, a exponential curve or a uh, or a straight line and it works you have to sometimes you know fiddle with it and, and tweak it until you get to a point where, where you like it and this kind of technique where you have a few elements uh, coming in and you filter in or uh, for example an ARP or some other element people like time cop 1983 use that a lot in their tracks they seldomly introduce an element just on its own like that you will typically hear the bass and the drums and all of a sudden something starts coming in coming in coming in and then once it's full bandwidth it starts to go out uh, again right that, that kind of movement is, is very cool all right let's hear it again let's 
see the speed here. Okay, slow it down again. Cool. And also a great technique to use is, let's say this is our track and we could play this game of filtering the ARP in and out by tiny bits. It doesn't always have to be such an obvious move like I showed you here. For example, if I were to... Let's do it here in... Let's do it live. For example, I'm just randomly creating a little bit of movement here. And I'm going to make this close here. Open a little bit more. And throughout the track, you can have these kinds of movements in a few elements. And they don't draw too much attention on some of themselves, but you definitely feel them. It went darker. It's coming back to brightness. Maybe we can exaggerate that. dark comes to brightness again goes dark again so this kind of, of movement in the elements uh, is a great technique to use and abuse great now I'm going to use a high pass filter to automate an entire mix. Up to this point, I had shown you how to automate one piece, two elements, maybe during the intro, this or that. And this time, I'm gonna automate my entire mix. And to do this, I simply go to my main channel fader and drop a, um, a, a, a filter in there and automate it. So by default, everything in my mix is gonna be automated. Or everything is gonna be filtered, rather. In this case, I'm using a high pass filter because I think we hadn't used that in our examples before, mostly low pass and band pass. Let's check it out. So we start from brightness, no body, starting to get to full body. We stay full bandwidth for a section or two, whatever. Then in the out row, we start to filter everything out again. And ending or starting your track like this is, a, again, a very standard move, a, a tried and true kind of thing that you can do. And as you heard, it feels different from using a low pass, going from very bright and tiny to more body back to uh, very bright and tiny as opposed to going to darkness and then coming back using a low-pass filter so it's different flavors none is better than the other and if you've used too much of the low-pass filter uh, move then try a high-pass filter for change let's play it again oh and before I do one thing that I strongly recommend I didn't do it here because this is an, an example no matter the filter plugin that you use it will typically always introduce a little bit of change into your sound when it is active, okay? So be very careful with placing filter plugins in your on your main channel and automating and make sure that when you're uh, when you're not using automation, for example, here out, outside of this section, then use automation to deactivate the plugin because it could be filtering out some of the high end or some of the low end depending on what you're using and you may not be um you, you may not have noticed it or it could be introducing certain resonances into your entire mix and you don't want that right if you apply a filter on a bass or or, or on just one um instrument like a like an arp or something things are more uh forgiving there you could leave it active if you want it right 
but don't leave a filter active on your main channel fader or on a group bus for an entire mix. Always uh, get into the habit of drawing your automation and also drawing the activation and the activation when you're not using the plugin in a, uh, outside of those sections. Cool. So let's listen to this again. Here it's full bandwidth. You still hear the very speedy move to this useless range, and here it's more slow and gradual. Okay, and something very cool that I know that you've heard DJs do a thousand times before and other types of electronic music, when you move your filter slowly, you get a filtering action. But when you do it quickly, you get this uh, very characteristic resonant kind of whoosh thing. For example, So it's cool um, to not only use it gradually, but at the end of the section, if you're gonna go into some uh, some place else with more energy or whatever, you can draw in a very steep curve like this to create that movement and that kind of effect. Once again here. caused by this very sharp move in the additional resonance that I included here. Cool. So that's an example of how to filter an entire mix with some interesting moves there. And of course, some of the stuff that I'm that I'm showing you here could come across a little gimmicky because I'm just trying to do them out of context and taking them to extremes. And maybe in your music you're not going to apply them exactly like this, maybe more subtly or uh, during a certain session, yeah, you're going to go all out and uh, create some of these very weird or extreme movements. Um, so I'm just going to show you the capabilities of this thing, how you apply it and how you uh, develop it and make it your own. That's part of your job. All right. I think we have like three more examples or four. So I'm just going to pick up speed here. All right. This example is about this is uh, sending an element into the background. So it's not going to go completely away, like uh, drop out of our arrangement or our mix. It's going to stay there, but we're going to clearly hear how it was in the foreground, and then it goes into the background and stays there for a certain section or for the entire uh, uh, piece. Time Cop and other guys are masters at this. Like They present a sound like an ARP or some kind of lead, and then they put it in the background, not completely drop it, and you, you barely hear it, and it's there, and it's um, it's f filling out the arrangement, it's creating a very cool filtered vibe, so it, it didn't drop out completely. Let's take a listen. In this case, what I am doing is... Okay, I am automating the filter. Let's take a listen. You can hear the ARP there clearly. Okay, here, it's there, behind the band. It didn't go away completely, it's still there. And then we can play with opening it up again. and so on and so forth. So we can play that game of present something, send it to the background, and maybe use an auto pan or um, automate the frequency so it moves a little bit. During a certain section, like towards the end of a section, we open up the, the filter again so we can hear it. It introduces more high frequencies, but then we close it back down again. Listen to a lot of Time Cop 933. He's, he's a master of that. He, <laughs> he, he really knows how to milk 
these techniques for all they are worth and you can get a lot of mileage and movement by trying these things out again sending something to the background keeping it there and just moving the the filter by tiny bits towards the end of sections so we don't every time that you hear something move it draws attention onto itself but then if it stays static it's like out of sight out of mind we don't pay attention anymore so then when we start opening the filter up again oh, our ears per cup and start noticing the arp again but then we filter it down on the, the next section so again it like it, it comes into the into our uh, field of vision then it goes out again comes in again that interplay it's a very cool thing to do all right another tried and true technique instead of applying filtering directly to an instrument or to a sound is just using it for white noise filter sweeps and i'm just going to show you one technique but you can filter white noise using a low pass or a band pass or a high pass depending on, on what you want whether you want to uh, filter in the highs or filter in the lows or just have it all uh, band restricted you, you need to play with those three flavors and use and abuse them in this case let me see what i got Okay, I think I, in this case, I have a, a synth playing noise instead of notes, and that's my Tau. And you'll see here that I have automated this frequency slider, which is the low-pass filter. So this is a very big screen. Uh, okay, cool. Let's take a listen. Let's listen from here. Watch the frequency slider here. Okay, that's a very popular move to do. Not only in Synthlay, but all styles of electronic music. And let's just listen to this in solo. And here, like I said, here's where you have to experiment do you want this to be a straight curve or a straight line, um, exponential, like this or like that? Or do you want it to move quicker or start earlier? All, all of these choices are the things you need to tweak in your music. And once you've done this big filter move, do you want the filter to drop or stay where it is? Again, there's no right or wrong. You just need to experiment with yourself and, and find what works for your music. And also, in this case, this is not just a, a, a natural filter sweep or a raw white noise sweep. I've added uh, kickstart and chorus and delay and reverb so it has more movement beyond the sweep. Take a listen. You can hear the side chain effect being provided by kickstart if i were to deactivate this it's a different kind of move it's not better it's just chocolate and vanilla and chocolate strawberry use all of these techniques to your advantage and also if i were not to use chorus it would sound a little bit more dry and less spacey and experiment with that obviously you could also use phasing chorusing flanging uh bit crushing whatever you want right it, it doesn't have to be like a straight and natural noise sweep make it your own introduce all the weird plugins that you've uh, wanted to to use for quite some time and figure out new stuff and make it your own cool and here we have another filter sweep Let's take a listen. It's possibly the reverse. Yeah, it's cool. So this technique, you can filter into a new section, or you can filter out on the downbeat of the of the new section, right? Just experiment with that and make it your own. All right, we have two more examples to go. Just gonna take a sip of water here. Intercept, 
Blue Cat, Hank, hey guys, thank you very much for showing up. Thank you for your support. Synthwave Dojo in the house. Alrighty. Another very cool technique is instead of filtering a sound or a synth by using an external plugin, we can automate the 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 filter slider uh, of the filter section of said synth. And depending on the patch that you have, it can do something very cool. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, I have a, what is this, an ARP, okay, and this ARP patch is using filter envelope modulation, and I can, I can see that because this envelope amount knob has a, a travel or has an amount, okay. If you use, or if you, rather, if you automate the filter frequency or the cutoff, the frequency slider in your synth, of a patch that's using um, filter frequency modulation like this one, two things are going to happen. As expected, depending on which direction you're going, it's going to go darker, right? Or it's going to let all of the, uh, the high frequencies come in. This is a, a low-pass filter. Most uh, subtractive synthesizers, if they only have one filter, it's going to be typically a low-pass filter. But in addition to that, the very interesting thing is that when... Um, because of, of how this patch is programmed, when the filter is in its natural state, it's going to sound very staccato, very choppy, uh, very short notes. And as we open up the filter, the notes are going to get longer. So you, we're going to have like a double whammy effect of more high frequencies, but the 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 notes are going to the notes are going to get longer, and that's very cool. Maybe you you've heard that. Uh, on a track and you weren't able to identify how um, again not only the frequency content changes but it's like the patch itself seems to change and it's because a certain kind of patch like i mentioned when you're using um, filter envelope amount or filter envelope modulation in your patch and you automate the filter cutoff you will get that kind of effect so let's hear it in action here the arp is dark and the notes are very staccato But here, as it opens up, the notes are getting longer, more fizzy, with more high frequency. Like, with zero definition, but as it closes down, the notes start to get plucky and staccato again. And that's very cool. It's as if you were also automating the decay in your patch right so again it's a double whammy not only do you hear more uh, high frequencies coming in but the character that the patch sounds goes from plucky and staccato in short choppy notes to longer notes that are almost they have no definition you can't hear in the space between the notes and it's a very cool sound let's hear it in solo here it's staccato plucky it opens up we lose the definition of the notes and that's fine it's like a wash of white noise and it's super cool when it goes back down you heard it there super cool here undefined open staccato choppy short notes all using the same kind of uh, just one automation move we're affecting let's say two characteristics of this sound and this is very cool to do one more time
cool. And if you think of it, like I said at the beginning, these filter moves or filter techniques, you can use them as a special effect or also as a as an arrangement tool. Because as, as you heard here, we played, what, like 16 bars. And without introducing any kind of lead or anything, this ARP automation created a journey that we paid attention to. Like it goes from staccato to open back down without our ears needing anything else changing in the arrangement. So imagine that you could uh, have one section that does this very simply with what three elements, ARP, bass, and, and drums. And you can write out 16 bars and introduce movement and interest to keep the listener's interest going without introducing new elements, right? So this is pretty cool. Again, if you really milk these techniques, use them in your tracks, you can, uh, using some, some very simple stuff, very simple elements, few elements, you can really create very interesting arrangements that uh, keep the listener's interest for long periods of time. And finally, we're going to get to the point where we can apply these filter techniques as like a special effect. It could be kind of gimmicky, yeah, but certainly it does have its time and place. So, here I'm going to use this filter called MS-20 by Arturia. Okay. And the gist of it is that there are certain filters like this MS-20 or the Fab Filter Volcano that they, the filter itself has some automation and LFO or uh, step, stepper capabilities. So you don't have to write all the automation manually in your DAW. For example, Fab Filter Volcano, I can come here and add a modulation, like for example, an LFO and create something here with uh, with more steps and with a different shape and set it to cycle for four bars or for every quarter, um, every quarter note, etc. And this will program some constant movement, right? And, and create some very interesting and wacky effects because I, I can not, not only automate the parameters that I showed you, but a bunch of stuff and can really turn your, your music into mush if you wanted to something super far out. And I'm going to do something like that with uh, this MS-20. This MS-20, as you see here, it um, presents filter, distortion, and output. But if you enable the advanced section, down here you have an envelope follower step sequencer and a function generator where you can here um, check and select a bunch of different rhythms and stuff that um, you assign it to these knobs and it will introduce a lot of movement. Um, that again, it's not for every track for an entire duration of a track, but for certain sections, it's going to work really well. And one thing that I wanted to show you before we got there is, and not all filters have this, and this is very cool, some of them do, is a feature called um, linked filters or ganged filters or looped filters. Look it up depending on what, what filter you have. And what it does is, it takes a band, a high pass filter and a low pass filter, and it you can control them both with the same knob, right? And you can make some very cool moves, like for example here. Okay, right now this is a low pass filter that's completely closed, so only the low pass are coming through. And as I turn this knob, it's going to open the low pass filter until we get to full bandwidth. Okay, but beyond this point on this knob. It's going to engage the high pass filter so we're going to start filtering out the lows and only end up with the highs so with one knob i can use those two types of filters in a very cool move check this out oh let me give this some peak or resonance okay this is a low pass filter full bandwidth now it turns into a high pass bye-bye bass frequencies which is very cool also if you were to program a sweep like this it's something very fast like it sounds different than just automating a low pass or a high pass and this ganged grouped or linked filter uh, feature 
is very cool and i'm sure you've heard it a lot of times in synthwave tracks it's like okay it went from dark but then what happened like the the bottom dropped off yeah you could automate that with two filters or get yourself a filter like this one um there are plenty of others that have this um this kind of feature and it's kind of a, a twofer uh, you just move one knob and get two kinds of actions and as you can see here the that yellow line that starts to to creep up or down that's the action of, of both filters okay cool let me show you some of the creative effects that you can um, use with a filter like this for example I don't know let's see if I can find something random Okay, this one has an LFO applied and that kind of movement. With a mix knob, I can select how much I want of it. And for your intro or for a certain section, of course, not for your entire track, this is a different sound than just a standard low pass or a standard bypass. It's related to those sounds, of course, but you hear it has more, more movement, more interest. Yeah, and of course I could uh, uh, change the rate here and the curve or whatever I wanted to make it my own, but that's an example. Then there's some other very ry uh, rhythmic stuff that you can do. Let's see if I can find one of those. For example, here you can see a lot of choppiness. This one has distortion as well. Cool. So this could be a nice way to start your track like this. And you slowly mix in the normal sound whatever that's very useful let's find another cool example um, pad fast movement oh, this is very cool distortion again very different than the standard moves so depending on your track whether you're going um, for a breakdown or the intro or the out or the outro for a particular section this could be very interesting cool now finally let's see if Let's check out some of the wacky presets here in Fat Filter Volcano Complex. Uh, I don't know any of these, but let's see. Well, this certainly looks <laughs> like it's going to introduce a lot of movement. I hope my headphones and your monitors or headphones don't explode. Very cool. Let's just browse the presets here randomly. Cool, very glitchy. Well, this is like very nice pulsating sound. Super cool. Very nice. Chaos. Of course, this one is affecting the tuning of the track. That's okay. Something sequenced. Transgate. Kind of a stutter effect. Very cool. Yeah, like I said, like 20 times already. Not for every track, not for an entire track or for every section, but certainly doing something like this can have its place and you can use it to your advantage and all this stuff that this plugin is automating you can do it manually in your DAW but definitely if you have a, a filter plugin that enables some of these modulations crazy LFO and and um, uh, an envelope following and shaping and all of that it's certainly uh, going to be easier for you to get some of these effects but certainly cool so this is a lot of uh, a lot of very cool stuff that you can play with Alrighty, so that's all that I wanted to show you guys today. Hey, Thomas. Let's see what else I got. As parting words, 
I kind of like to say, experiment with all the stuff that I showed you here today. Um, a very cool idea is to create like a sandbox document or project in your DAW where you have, I don't know, maybe loops or you can program certain sins or whatever. And you use it just to go in at filtering and automation and just to try stuff out. Because if, if whenever you want to try a certain idea, it's like, oh man, I got to create a project and add this plugin and this and that. Uh, that takes away from the Im immediateness of the moment. So having some kind of, uh, let's say, filter testing project or filter sandbox where you can go straight in and, and start uh, doing some of these wacky moves and experimenting with stuff will certainly uh, help out. And get a solid grip and foundation on using the three uh, basic filter shapes that I showed you at the beginning. Low pass filter, band pass filter, and high pass, low pass, and band pass. And experiment those. Listen to a lot of music, not only synthwave, but non-synthwave, especially other kinds of electronic music. And write down, for example, ideas like on a house track, you heard that, I don't know, a very something sounded very cool. Like a um, an instrument was introduced very quickly with like a whooshing sound or something like that. Try to see if you can replicate that in your DW, in your filter or sandbox. Or if you heard something like, I don't know, an entire section was filtered out but then you heard uh, the same section being filtered in while the other one was going out, like crossfade. How do you do that? Maybe you have to uh, render uh, render the section and have them crossfade or filter, whatever, right? Make note of those things and, and, and use it in creative ways. And always try to find ways to, to make it your own, right? Understand the basic concepts and figure out what works for you and your music. Alrighty, so... I hope, my friends, that you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I will see you in the next one. Keep on synth waving.